Welcome to Shraf's technical series. In today's session, we will discuss AWS S3 client service and use this client to perform S3 select operation on a parquet file stored on AWS S3. And then we'll integrate this AWS S3 client service with the boost based HTTP service and router so that we can do a REST GET call to get data from AWS S3 by using S3 select. So this is the data flow diagram. The browser client sends a JSON request to AWS S3 service, which performs AWS S3 select on parquet file saved in AWS S3. Once the S3 select query is sent to AWS, AWS will run that on a parquet file and then sends, the back, sends back the data in JSON format. And then the AWS S3 service will return the data to the browser but in JSON format. So before we do that, we'll go through a quick demo. So this is the Shraf's website where we already integrated the backend service. So I'll quickly log out and show it how to get there. So shravs.com. So once we log in, in the analytics page, in the year-to-date analysis, it pulls in all the codes, the tickers that are supported by this screen. So once we get that data, so there are too many tickers to process, so it takes a while. So in the ETF screen, let's quickly query some ETFs, for example, QQQ. So these tickers are just for research purpose suggestions. They are not in any way any uh, investment advice. So please consult your uh, investment advisor for anything. So this is just for research purpose. So we pick those three tickers. And if you go down, so for those three tickers, we show the performance, three weeks performance, three months returns, six months year to date return, one year return, etc. And then this is the raw data. So this raw data is displayed in a tabular format here. So that is in the front end, which is implemented in Angular. In subsequent sessions, we'll go over this uh, implementation. So in the back end, we do it in C++. So I'll quickly run that once. Okay, the server is down. Let me start it. So while the server starts, I'll go through the Thunder client. So in the Thunder client, we do a GET request to the local host over port 8080 and use these parameters, bucket, key, column, in clause. So we send the bucket here, key, column. and in clause. So once we send that request, it goes to the router, then S3, AWS S3 service, and then we do the select query on the parquet file. So this is the parquet file in bucket, this one, with the key, this one. And then this is the column we are querying on, code column. And we're interested in these tickers. So that is the code. And then the in class will ha have those codes. So that is how we send the request. And then we get the data from the AWS S3. So that's the quick demo. We'll go through the code base. I'll switch over to the document screen. So we discussed the data flow diagram. Now I'll go through the code. In this uh, service, AWS S3 service, yep. so we get the parquet file. So this is the parquet file. And once we do the select, we get this data, which was uh, shown in that browser. So now we will go through the code base. 
So we have these services, the S3, AWS S3 service, which has the S3 client. We have gone through all this code in the AWS S3 service video, so we'll skip all that. We'll jump to S3 select function. So the S3 select function takes a bucket, key, column, in clause. So we create a request of type S3 object content request. To that request, we set the bucket name, key, expression type, which is SQL. And then we create an output string, stream buffer, and we begin the buffer with the open square bracket. So if you look at the data, it starts with an open square bracket, then an object, comma separated, multiple objects. So that's what we do here. Now, if in clause is not empty, then we take the in clause, which is uh, comma separated uh, tickers, and then we push the comma separated tickers to a vector of strings. We push back. And then we iterate over those those uh, that vector, and then we create a, a bracket like this, open brace, and then we create this string. So that's what we did. If the ticker, the last ticker, if it's a last ticker, we don't want to put a comma. So that's what we did. If iterator is not the end, then only you put a comma separation. Then we close the in clause with this bracket. We do a log trivial, which showed here select statement we, to just show what select statement is being sent. So that's about in clause. If we have an in clause, if we don't, then we just do select star from S3 object. And then we do a, we have to set up input serialization and the output serialization. In our case, we are reading from an input parquet file. So parquet input, set parquet as the input. And then our output would be in JSON format. We want the data in JSON format. So we do set record delimiter comma and set output JSON. So we put the serializations, input serialization and the output serialization. And then we create handlers. So on every record, AWS S3 sends the select results in batches. So for every batch we get from S3 select, this event handler is called. So on that records event, plural, so that means multiple records, we get the payload. And then we get a records vector. So we stream through that vector and create an AWS string. And then we use this record C string, C string to write it to the buffer, which is our output string buffer. We, are, we can also get statistics when the S3 select is in, is in progress. If it's a large parquet file or any other input file, AWS S3 will send us statistics like how many records were processed, how many more to go, etc. So we can print those here, but to show a progress bar, but in this case, we didn't do that. So this function is empty. Then we set the handler to set event stream handler. And then we do S3 select content. We send the request. Once we check what is the outcome of it, if it's a success, then we print those here. So once, we, once our buffer is full, in our case, our file is 7 MB. So this buffer could go up to 7 MB we create an output string out of the buffer. And then we close the output string with uh, square brackets because the end of the stream is a square bracket. We close it with this. And then we send the output string. So that's the function for S3 select. Uh, and then we add that function, S3 select, to AWS S3 services, service.hpp file, the header file. So we included this function here. Now in the router, so this is the main function which we discussed in 
boost program options. So in this we had to make a change for beginning for setting up the AWS S3 API. If you recall from our previous discussion in CPP AWS S3 services, in this discussion, before we can use AWS S3 SDK, C++ SDK, we have to init the API and shut down the API. So uh, the AWS SDK does some memory allocations and all in this init API function. So we have to do that before we can do any AWS S3 operations. And also our web service is multi-threaded. It's going to use Boost ASIO to spin up multiple threads. So per AWS SDK documentation, we can create this in the beginning thread. And these multiple threads can share the SDK settings. So AWS SDK is implicitly thread safe. So that's why we do it here before we start the web server. And then once the web server exits, we do the shutdown API. So that's why I added this, uh, this file in this discussion for this video. And then the router. From the REST API router discussion, if you recall, we take this segment, in this case, the S3. This is a segment or one of the path elements. We take this S3 path and determine which controller has to be called. So we, if it is S3, we go into S3 loop, S3 condition. If it is MongoDB, we process it as a MongoDB. So if it is S3, we go into, we call the AWS S3 controller. In this case, before, if it is S3, we're checking for parameters. We need these parameters or else it's an incorrect uh, entry. So we send bad request. Then one, we check all four parameters are present. We check bucket, key, column, and in clause are present. And we do that because uh, we don't want to get the whole parquet file over the browser. So we restrict, we enforce a column and an in clause so that we can limit the amount of data we send. So we're checking all four parameters are there. If not, it's a bad request. Once all four parameters are there, like we here, all four parameters are there. We're displaying it in the console. Then we do the AWS3 controller and get, and we send the parameters to the controller. And the rest of the functions are same, so we, won't, we can skip those. And this is the router.hpp. In the router.hpp, we have the AWS S3 controller and AWS S3 client. So with that, I'll uh, close this discussion. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please uh, post them here, or you could reach out in the YouTube channel. Thank you very much.